Hello everyone, Mr. Lipchick here, and the topic of our discussion for this segment will be Congressional Membership. What does it take to become a member of Congress, and uh, what type of lifestyle and responsibilities do members of Congress have? Okay. Congress is a bicameral legislature, meaning that it is made up of two houses. Senate and the House of Representatives. The founders intended that it would be the most powerful branch of government. It is modeled after the English Parliament, with the Senate uh, being akin to the House of Lords and the House of Representatives being related to the House of Commons. The House of Commons in England was elected. The House of Lords was appointed by uh, the nobility. Sessions of Congress. Each term of Congress begins on January 3rd of an odd-numbered year and lasts for a period of two years. Each term is divided into two sessions that last for one year each. Congress remains in session until its members vote to adjourn. Neither House of Congress may adjourn for more than three days without the approval of the other House. If either House is adjourned, the President may call it back into special session if necessary, usually for a national emergency such as uh, the need for military action. Membership in the House The House of Representatives has 435 members making it the largest house in Congress. The Constitution states that the seats in the house must be a portion that is divided between the states on the basis of population. Members must be at least 25 years old, a citizen of the United States for seven years, and a resident of the state that sends them. Members of the house are elected every two years with the election taking place in November of even-numbered years. All members of the House run for a re-election at the same time. Representation and Reapportionment Every 10 years, the Census Bureau takes a census to count the number of persons living in the United States. The number of persons living in a state decides the number of representatives to which it is entitled. Reapportionment occurs when the population of a state changes relative to that of other states. A relative growth in population causes the reapportioning of additional representatives. And a relative drop in population causes the reapportioning of fewer representatives. The House began with only 64 members, but it grew in size as the nation grew. A concern over the growing size of the House caused the passage of the Reapportionment Act of 1929. The House would thereafter be limited to a size of 435 members. And each census would determine how seats would be divided up among the 50 states. If you look to the map on the right, uh, the states that gained re, uh, representatives were also gaining in population, the southern and western states, uh, where the uh, states in red have been losing representatives because of a loss of population. Congressional redistricting. After the results of the census and reapportionment, the state legislature sets up congressional districts, one for each representative. This is called redistricting. After the representatives for that state are then elected out of these districts. Redistricting has historically been abused through gerrymandering and creating districts of unequal population. Gerrymandering is when political the political party controlling the state legislature redraws the congressional district boundaries to give itself more power. The shapes of these districts are not logical geographically. 
packing, uh, a practice of gerrymandering, re means redrawing the districts to include as many of the opposing uh, party as possible in one district, reducing their overall number of districts and representatives. Cracking is dividing an opponent's part, opponent party's power base between districts to prevent them from electing their candidates. The term gerrymandering was uh, coined when Massachusetts government, or Governor El Elbridge Gerry used his power to redraw districts in his state to give his party an advantage. And they called that the gerrymander, a cartoonist drew it in a paper. You can see it to the right there. Uh, it was called gerrymandering because of a published cartoon that made the district look like a giant salamander. The Supreme Court has since ruled that districts must be compact, contiguous, or physically adjoining. Some forms of gerrymandering continue today, however. Redrawing districts with unequal populations has also been a way of redistricting to influence the outcome of elections. Densely populated districts and thinly populated ones were created. This caused the votes of the people in the densely populated districts to be worth less than those in the thinly populated ones. The result was a series of Supreme Court rulings that created the principle of one person, one vote. That is, each district should contain about the same number of people. Membership in the Senate. To become a senator, you must be at least 30 years of age, a U.S. citizen for nine years, and a resident of the state that you represent. Senators are elected at large, meaning uh, that the entire state votes for both senators, two per state. Elections are held in November of even-numbered years and are for a term of six years. Only one-third of the Senate runs for re-election every two years. Senators are well paid with health care expenses, housing, pension, and other benefits. The 27th Amendment, however, causes pay raises voted on by the Senate not to go into effect until after the next election. Most of their business expenses, including communications with their constituents, are paid for. Okay, membership in both chambers, House and Senate. Members of Congress are free from arrest while at Congress or on their way to or from. Exceptions are treason, felony, a felonious crime, and breach of peace. So, you know, assault, rape, kidnapping, murder, you know, they, clearly they would arrest them for something like that, but not for, let's say, a traffic ticket while they're on their way to Congress. They cannot be sued for anything they say on the congressional floor. They can be sued for statements to the press, however. Members of Congress can refuse to seat an elected member, expel a member with a two-thirds vote, or censure them, vote their public disapproval. Most members of Congress are white, middle-aged males, although this is changing. Most are attorneys, as they are familiar with the law. Once elected, members have what is called incumbency, making it easier for them to get re-elected, because they get more exposure from the media, they're better known, and they have a greater chance to establish a political record on which to run the campaign. And consequently, most get reelected. That concludes our discussion on congressional membership. Thank you for viewing, and I look forward to seeing you in the live lesson. Have a great day.